There once was a man born of a royal lineage. Though royal by birth, his life was without glory nor prestige. A boy left alone in the world, fighting and bleeding for survival. The bravest sword on the cruel battlefield, this crimson-haired warrior. the weight of his lineage to fulfill his bloodline's obligation he who fights against his destiny through the power within him motivated by the past driven by bloody memories looking all over for you. Where were you? You're late. You must hurry to the training ground. Uh-oh. So Buford looks a bit upset. We should hurry before he becomes even angry. You're late yet again. I thought I once told you that time is as precious as gold. I have no choice but to report to the Duke if your tardiness continues. Since you are late, we'll begin training immediately. Are you ready? Then let's get started. Today, we will proceed with combat training. You'll learn how to use the sword against that scarecrow. Go and swing your blade. You should, there's more to wielding a sword than just swinging it. A lot more to it. Never forget that all knights make their oath with that sword. You decide your fate upon the blade and bear the weight of your pledge. Now, sheath your sword and come to me. You are the direct descendant of the great hero, King Depardieu's eldest son, Archduke Lowen. You are in the line of succession to inherit House Decker as well as the throne. That is why you must keep training. The status of a monarch isn't just given, it must also be earned. Do you understand? Now, next will... What? Young master, wait here. One of you, guard the young master. Everyone else, to battle positions. What is this? There's Deckard's young master! Get him! Young master, run! We must move quickly! Sir Buford, it's fine. He's safe, and that's what matters. You must get away from here. This place is dangerous, my lord. 
Sir Buford, that isn't possible. Don't you understand? This must all be part of that tyrant's plan. Decker and Six is obsessed with the throne. He's imprisoning or killing all those with the right to secession. This won't end unless I die. I do not fear death. But this child, my innocent son, Sir Buford, I beg you, please protect my son. But, my lord... Please, Sir Buford, protect my child. I understand. By my own blood, I swear to protect him. My child, I love you. You must survive, no matter the cost. Time is running out. You must leave, Sir Buford. <sighs> Go now. Keep close to Sir Buford. I love you. We're taking a hidden passage just a little further now. Follow me. Finally, going to taste the blood of the Red Wolf. Come, come! You won't get past me. The world was a merciless place for a boy left kinless, thus defenseless. Pursued by foes, days of fear ensued. And hunger followed him like a shadow. All he had for enduring the brutal winter was his warm breath on frozen hands. Amidst such agony, however, was the loyalty and love of the Elder Knight, Buford. With Buford's devotion and care, the boy grew into a man who forged his own destiny with a sword. Now, let adversity cross his path again, for he shall conquer them all.
relieved to see you unscathed. I was pleased to hear that you did well at the Red Knight's bugbear raid, but you know I would never have approved of this excursion. I can see that these fetters are frustrating you. Come to think of it, it's already been a decade since we hid away on this remote island to escape our pursuers. Very well then, if you can manage to become an official knight, I'll be able to rest at ease, even if I give you free reign. Still, you must keep in mind that with freedom comes responsibility. Go visit Sir Valton. He can explain the appointment ceremony. We Red Knights have protected the Talking Isle for generations as proud royal knights. We have always upheld this duty, even through hard, dark times. When Prince Depardieu sought refuge here, for instance, or when Capricus was resurrected. It would have been an honor to appoint you as one of us. Unfortunately, we will have to postpone that for a while. Recently, the number of missing has grown at an alarming rate. Those on the search mission have also gone missing, including the head of the appointment ceremony. So, for now, like you to join us on another search mission to find our members. Elisa, I will leave you in charge of this mission. The two of you can work together. I'm Alyssa. Let's cut to the chase as we don't have much time. We'll investigate the North Island first since that was where the members were last headed. Let's stock up on what we need first. This is a green potion. It's an essential item that makes you faster. Running out of green potions is a major inconvenience. Don't forget to buy them in advance from the general merchant. Come to think of it, I've heard your name before. You're famous for your audacious red hair. I also heard you can be quite reckless. Either way, I don't really care as long as you do your job. Just as you can't hide the sky with your hand alone, the same can be said about the truth. Ah, if it isn't the bugbear, Beheader, you've grown well, just like your red hair would suggest. Redheads have a way of overcoming hardships and paving a path of their own, just like the wise King Deckern II, who overthrew the false king. Grandpa, stop saying weird things like that. Have you seen the missing knights by any chance? Hmm. Perhaps the island's whispers lured them into darkness. They wouldn't be the first on this. Many people disappeared 130 years ago, too. Back when the waters around the Talking Isle were called the Bloody Sea. Half of everyone alive on the Talking Isle disappeared. What happened to the rest, you ask? They all died, of course. Do you know why? It was because of the high demon Capricus's resurrection. Legend has it that a demon lay dormant under the earth of the Talking Isle. We should just go. When Grandpa Alfred starts with one of his stories, he never stops talking. <laughs>